What's going on everybody? You're watching the Four Wheel Kid channel and I recently got this old van and some people ask what do you need such a big van for? And I'm going to show you guys what my plans are for this thing and it definitely needs a lot of work. So let's go ahead and get things started. <laughs> So to start things out, this is a 1996 Ford E350 Club Wagon XLT. And I'm not exactly sure what the XLT stands for, but it has something to do with it being extended. It's got quite a bit more room in the back, which is nice because I plan on doing a camper conversion on this thing. And I'm definitely gonna take my time and I'm gonna have it all well thought out and planned out. And I'm gonna do a lot of electrical work because I love electrical. It's one of my favorite things. It's going to be pretty sweet when it's all done, but it does need quite a bit of work and I actually picked this thing up for almost free. Uh, the church I go to had this van for like the youth group and it was actually getting vandalized and they just wanted to get rid of it because it needed quite a lot. The catalytic converter had been stolen, uh, the thing got keyed a bunch of times, the windshield has a ton of cracks in it, the gas cap was missing, the battery was dead, and it was sitting for about a year and a half without even being started. So the first thing I did was just change the oil because I didn't want to pump all that old stuff up into the engine. And I got a new battery for it and it actually started right up. And I just drove it home and it was really loud because it didn't have a catalytic converter. But I got it fixed up and I was able to have it pass emissions and the numbers were really low. So it's definitely a pretty decent clean engine in there still. And the transmission seems okay. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. So it's just got a simple key blade, no key chip or anything. And it does actually have power locks, but there's no key fob. So I'm actually gonna add a Viper alarm system with the remote start and it should be pretty easy because it does have power locks which is good. Go ahead and pop the hood. So I didn't expect it but this van actually has a 460 big block or a you could say 7.5 liter and it's a 350 so it's basically a one ton truck and this thing's actually rated to haul 10,000 pounds on a trailer which is pretty crazy and as you can tell you can't even really see the engine when you open the hood you can barely see a valve cover if you look down in there and this thing also has two batteries and what's interesting is uh this one was still like 12.4 something volts, but this one over here was completely dead and I just got one out of the junkyard for 25 bucks, super cheap. I'm not exactly sure how the batteries are tied together, but I'll take a look at the wiring diagram because I'd be really interested to know. So other than the oil change, my friend Irvin helped me uh, change the brake fluid because it was really dark and it looks a lot better. We used uh, dot four. This uh, takes dot three, but you can use dot four. It's actually better and completely compatible. And like I said, the transmission fluid is a little dirty, but it's not like burnt or anything. It still has a nice red color to it and it's at the proper level. Pretty much just gonna change all of the fluids just to start out. So this van is rear wheel drive, but it does have quite a bit of ground clearance. Just as stock, you can easily crawl under there and work on stuff, which is pretty nice. And I don't know, maybe someday I'll do a four wheel drive conversion, but it's definitely not on my radar anytime soon. It would be nice, but it's just so darn expensive. So in the back, uh, I'm not exactly sure what differential it has. It's probably some Dana. I haven't really looked into it. It's a uh, open diff, not LSD, unfortunately. I, mean, I was hoping it would be a limited slip, but I mean, I can always add one later. It's seeping a little bit around the pumpkin cover. So that's definitely gonna be one of the early things I do is just pull that cover off, drain everything out and fill it up, reseal it. So with the giant engine, this thing is not gonna get super good gas mileage, but it is cool. This thing actually only has like 240 horsepower, which is pretty pathetic, but it does have about 400 foot pounds of torque. One thing I'm definitely gonna do is add a rear hitch on this. And also 
I'm gonna replace this bumper because this thing's all dented up like crazy and I'm just gonna get a black one and then put like an actual rear hitch that goes around the spare tire and connects to the frame because I have a dual sport motorcycle it's a TW200 and that's actually my other channel if you want to check that out I do a lot of motorcycle adventures so I think that'd be super cool to put my TW on the back of this thing as I go on adventures around the country plus the nice thing about having another vehicle is that if the van breaks down I can get the bike off and go ride to town get some parts because it is street legal and I can ride off-road and do all kinds of fun stuff and I think I'm gonna get a class 4 hitch I think it can like have a thousand pound tongue weight which is way overkill but a class 3 would be perfectly fine for my bike I think it's like 500 pounds tongue weight but yeah, the bike on the back of this thing is not going to be a big deal at all. It only weighs like 270 pounds. The rust on this thing is not too bad. It's got a bit of it, but it's uh, for sure manageable. Another big thing is a lot of the paint is peeling. So I'm going to be repainting this whole thing probably uh, just like spring or summer because it's kind of too cold to do that right now. So if we uh, take a look up here on the roof, little ribs in the middle. Uh, definitely have some surface rust on them. I'm pretty much going to be wire wheeling and sanding all of the rust out of those and applying Eastwood's Rust Encapsulator Platinum. I've actually already did the rain gutters on the side. That was a lot of work because they're a little bit rusty. It was mostly rust in the back and then the sides I pretty much just got it all down to bare metal and then used uh, the rust encapsulator platinum I love this stuff so far you can apply it directly over rust but it's best to get off as much rust as possible and then if there's any left behind it's not gonna cause problems down the road but it can be applied to bare metal as well and it stands up to like I don't know 1500 hours of salt spray which is kind of cool it's infused with some kind of a aluminum dust I guess and it's super strong and UV resistant but I got all the rain gutters finished and I resealed them with some urethane 3M seam sealer and then Dicor on top of that. What I'm going to be doing for the camper conversion is having a uh, max air fan somewhere in the middle rear. And I'm going to have like four or five Vantec roof rails and they attach to the rain gutters and those are going to be aluminum. I think they can handle like 250 pounds a piece, so it'll be more than enough. Then I'm gonna have three 100 watt solar panels on the front, so that'll give me 300 watts of solar total. And then I'm gonna have one of those coffin looking roof boxes to store stuff and I'm gonna put that on one side and then over here I'm gonna put like decking so it'll be easy to get up on the roof and get to your supplies or uh, just hang out and take photos or whatever cool stuff van life people like to do and then I'm gonna put a ladder on the door um, it's not too expensive if you get the door ladder I think there's like a fancy brand called Illuminesc Illum I don't I can't remember the name, but they make a really cool side one that attaches to the rain gutter and then down below. That one's like 500 bucks and you can get one that goes on the door for about a hundred and something dollars. So I'm just gonna go with the cheaper one. And I also don't weigh that much, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Oh, also another thing, uh, this rear window right here was bashed out when this van was getting vandalized as it was sitting and I got a new one. Uh, factory tent just like the old one for about $12 at the junkyard and I already made a video of installing that oh also I'm gonna have a backup camera but instead of putting it down here I'm actually gonna put it up on the roof rack and that's because I'm gonna be having my bike back here a lot and that would block the view also I'm gonna have an LED light bar under the front rack kind of underslung below the solar panels let's go ahead and take a look underneath and this is actually probably the worst of the rust right here, but I'm gonna kinda hollow this all out and probably just fiberglass it for now. It's definitely rotting through, but it's not all the way over there. And later down the road, I could always cut this piece off at a junkyard and weld that on, but I'm gonna try fiberglassing, see if that works, because that's definitely not any kind of structural issue, but check out this wheel well, it's not too bad. Oh, there's a little rust right there. I'm gonna wire wheel that, give it some rust encapsulator, and there's a little bit right here, not too bad. Here's the front wheel well, and the frame is a little bit rusty. It's mostly just surface rust. So if we 
take a look under here. Like it's not flaking off or anything. It's just on the on the surface there. I mean that doesn't look bad at all. I'm just gonna use some rust encapsulator. A little bit of rust on the drive shaft. Obviously I'm gonna replace the U-joints. Gas tank looks pretty good and I'm actually gonna have to drop this thing down before too long. I'll explain that in a minute. So this midship tank I think holds about 35 gallons. And it's pretty crazy because my TW200 could go well over 3,000 miles with that much fuel. And the van, not so much. Here's the body, a little bit of rust here and there, but I mean, that is not bad at all. Pretty happy with that. This thing has a rear heater and air conditioning box and the heater lines are getting kind of rusty. See, they're actually flaking off there. So the plan is to actually remove the rear heater and air conditioning system because it's just kind of pointless to leave that on there with those lines and those lines cost way too much and the heater box takes up way too much space as I'll show you here in just a moment and they actually sell little AC block off caps that go on the front of the AC lines so I'll be removing all these lines and that heater box and I'll probably make a video on it it's got the big old leaf springs but yeah I'm gonna use a lot of Eastwood encapsulator platinum under this thing. The exhaust isn't too bad. There's a little hole in the muffler though. I'm just gonna patch that up. But pretty much when I do the drive shaft and the U-joints, I'm gonna drop the whole differential down a little bit, put new shocks on it and clean up the leaf springs, put new bushings and possibly do the rear bearings as well. Oh, also I'm gonna be putting a five gallon diesel tank right here. I'm gonna attach it to the side of the frame rail. And that's gonna be for the diesel heater. And I'm gonna customize it and put a fitting that goes past here and then up to the surface of the bumper where there'll be like a flat little fill thing that's sealed and I can just fill it pretty easily. Oh, it's got a few little seeps and stuff. I mean, it's not really dripping. So I'm just gonna clean that up. Also, there's like a little rivet that broke off for the front left eye beam so I'm gonna have to pop that out and probably put a bolt through there It'd be pretty easy though clean it up do some rust encapsulator new shocks the brakes are really bad it's pulsating so it definitely needs new rotors someone probably drove it down the mountain rode the brakes all the way down overheated them and I'm gonna drop the trans pan just do a fluid exchange new filter and check the torque on everything I kind of like the design of this open frame but it does uh close up right about there however i'm just gonna fill that whole thing with wool wax or fluid film whatever i have and once i encapsulate all the rust and it has a long time to cure i'm going to yeah just cover the whole bottom side with some wool wax i love that stuff wool wax and fluid film it's amazing stuff if you haven't heard of it all right that's about everything i want to show you on the outside Let's take a look at the inside. Let's go ahead and start it up. Definitely has a little bit of a long crank time. And it's kind of funny, like right after I had my emissions done on the way home, the check engine light came on and I uh, read the fault codes and both banks one and two are reporting lean. Uh, one was a permanent fault and the other one was just a pending. However, I did look at the freeze frame data and when the fault happened, the long-term fuel trim was uh, really high, about like 23. So it's trying to add a lot more fuel. And I looked at the load, it was about like 80 something percent load. So it's not going to be a vacuum leak issue. Usually a vacuum leak will have high positive fuel trims at idle and then it'll get better when you give it gas or if you're driving because the air leak becomes less important as uh, more air is going through the system. So I pretty much either have a mass airflow sensor or a fuel delivery issue. And I believe it's a fuel delivery problem um, because when I prime the pump, uh, listen to what the fuel pump sounds like. It's a uh, really crackly However, I just got a fuel pressure tester kit, so I'm gonna test the fuel pressure I'm really thinking it's the pump But it could also be the filter or a clogged filter caused the pump to go bad something like that But uh, I definitely think it's fuel related and apparently it's pretty common on these Ford bands So I'll have a full diagnostic video on that and also 
this thing was vandalized. I think some kids or something may have like been putting rocks down the fuel tank because when I noticed the fuel cap was missing, I saw a few little pebbles right there. So I don't know. But either way, it would be probably good to drop the tank and clean it all out and just put a new fuel pump in there and then I don't have to worry about it anymore, new filter. But other than that, it runs pretty decently. I just don't wanna drive it until I get that fixed. I think it sounds pretty cool. I love that big black forward sound. I think Greta Thunberg would be proud. I already uh, put some LEDs in the map lights. They were burned out slash missing anyways. So it's nice to have a little bit of light in here. Air conditioning doesn't work, but uh, that's definitely on my later list of things after I get rid of that big air conditioning slash heater box. I actually haven't tried the cruise control horn works. I don't know if I'll do the really big train horns, but I'll make it a little bit louder. And it's got power windows and power mirrors. It all seems to work. Definitely needs a new windshield, that's for sure. However, it doesn't seem to be leaking at the moment. That's probably on my higher list of things to do. It's got this older single din stereo. The little face plate is missing. And they actually make a double din kit for this, where you cut it out and there's a little template and a plate that goes over it. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna put an Apple CarPlay a head unit in here and it'll have like a backup camera system and all that cool stuff. I'm gonna replace this with like a little USB charger and voltage display. This big hump right here is called the doghouse and you actually remove this to work on the rear part of the engine. It's actually kind of convenient to be able to do that. It's a little tight to get it out of here. You have to move the seats all the way back and stuff, but it's definitely doable. And also, I'm pretty sure I remember this van had a center console thing. They have different ones that slide in here, and I really can't find them online. And if I found one, it'd be really expensive. So I'm actually gonna build my own out of like some nice wood and then have like a little top on it that opens up and you can put stuff in it. And then I'll have cup holders and there's a cup holder right here and your cup will just go through and sit on the top of it. So that should be pretty cool. I think it probably got stolen when someone broke into the rear glass back there. And also I'm gonna replace just the front carpet um, just with black stuff. They have it on Rock Auto for like 100 bucks. Another cool thing is I found some cool seats for this in the junkyard. They look like some retro van racing seats. They came out of like a I can't remember the name of it, but it's like the top of the line, super fancy version of this van. And they have little cutouts right here. <laughs> they just need to be cleaned up a little bit. I'm gonna kind of mix and match all the stuff until it works, but it would be nice to have all four armrests at work. I'm not sure what happened to that one. But also when I'm doing the carpets, I'm gonna put that sound deadening mat underneath just to help quiet things down a little bit. It is not too bad. However, it is loud with everything missing in here. Also, when I have these seats out and working on them, I'm gonna go ahead and install one of those cool swivel bases on the passenger seat only. That way I can swivel it around and have a nice place to sit and kind of open it up in here a little bit more. Also, I'm not quite sure what this giant hump is behind the seat. I don't know what's back there, but I guess we'll find out. And then I'm gonna have a countertop that comes out to about here and it's gonna have a separate table that folds down and you can fold it up. And I'm also gonna be able to have it adjust up and down and that'll make a nice little desk slash eating area. It'll be cool, you can just sit there, you can leave the door open with like a bug screen or something. That would be pretty rad. Also on that counter, I'm gonna have a stove top, probably right here, just cause it's close to the door so you can vent it out. And it's pretty cool these windows pop open to get some ventilation. I really like that. However, the rear ones don't have that, but I believe some vans did, so maybe I'll find some window poppers in the junkyard and modify them. That would be pretty cool. And also, this one over here folds out as well. But anyways, I pretty much cleared everything out of here. Really wasn't that hard, and I wasn't keeping any of this stuff, so I kind of just cut it up and threw it away. I did give some of it away to this one guy who wanted it. But yeah, it's pretty clean in here. There's really not any rust. Maybe just a few little spots on the floor. It's mostly just where the paint got in through. 
And then the body mount bolts are a little rusty. I'll clean those up. But pretty much I'm gonna clean it up really good in here and then uh, sand down any of these treble spots and paint it with some rust encapsulator platinum. And I also got uh, some shorter bolts and I'm just gonna use those to plug the holes. I just got the original ones in here just to keep like mice and stuff from getting in here. Cause I think mice can get into a spot that it's as small as a pencil eraser, eraser which is pretty crazy. So obviously just being a regular Econoline van, I can't stand up completely. And I'm not that tall, I'm only about 5'4". And I'm gonna have even less space in here uh, once I put the subfloor in and the roof. But yeah, I definitely think I can live with that because I can go outside to stand. I'm gonna have a place to sit and a place to lay down. And I can always kneel down. Originally I did want a high roof fan, like a Transit or something like that, but uh, they're just so expensive. I even saw one that had like 120,000 miles and they still wanted over 30,000 for them. So it just wasn't worth it. And a better way to learn how to do a camper conversion because I'm not gonna be as worried when I cut holes in the roof and stuff like that. And that way I can make sure van life is really something I wanna do before I pour a bunch of money into it. All right guys, so I'll tell you about my situation, my life a little bit. So I'm 29 years old and I actually live with my parents right now. Uh, I pay them a little bit of rent every month and I have a full-time job. I work about 45 hours a week as an automotive mechanic for a luxury car dealer. I don't mind living here. I mean, it works out pretty good because my parents have a pretty big house and they're, we get along really well. And I'm very blessed to, you know, have this sort of situation. And it's pretty cool. My parents are retired, so they leave, you know, for like a month at a time with their trailer camper over there. And, you know, it's nice that they have someone to look after the house and I watch the chickens and make sure nothing crazy happens. And I've kind of been like figure, trying to figure out if I wanna, you know, jump into a house and have to pay a mortgage every month. And then I kind of came across this van and I've, I've wanted to do something like this for a long time, but I think I'm really gonna try van life. And I don't know, it just, it seems like the way house prices are going, it just seems kind of like slavery in a lot of ways. And I can always, you know, buy a place down the road, but I think I'm really gonna just build this van over the next year or two and then just try to live in it. I mean, I don't have to do it forever. It could be a few years or I may really like it and do it for a long, long time. I have no idea. But I think it's definitely worth giving it a shot before I lock myself down on a mortgage. And then that way I can kind of travel the country and figure out where I wanna live. Cause I just think this is a really good opportunity. And what other time in life am I gonna be able to do something like this? I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what happens. I'll probably put a big chunk of my savings in a real estate investment trust, just so I'm not getting too behind on the housing market. But we'll see what happens. Back to the van conversion. So that's the heater slash air conditioner conditioning box and that thing is going away pretty soon. It does take up quite a lot of space. Originally, I kind of wanted to keep this just so I could start the van and, you know, cool everything off with air conditioning. I thought that would be pretty cool, but I just don't think it's worth it. And it's mostly those lines below that they're starting to rust. And it just seems like a liability to have that rust through when you least expect it and start losing coolant. So that's going away and I guess we'll start out with the bed. Right dead center in the middle of these wheel wells to the very back is a full size bed if you lay sideways. Since I'm only five foot four, I should be able to fit sideways no problem in the Econo line. I still have quite a bit of room right there, so. I shouldn't have an issue whatsoever once I put some insulation and boards right there. So I guess that's a, a plus to being a little bit shorter. It'll be nice to have a full size bed width, just not lengthwise, but I don't really need it. So it should work out pretty well. Another thing is uh, how high I want the bed to be. It would be nice to be able to sit up and again not being very tall definitely helps because i also want to have you know a good amount of room underneath that is the nice thing about the high top vans get a lot more room to play with um height wise also i'm gonna have all of the windows tint it to 15 percent i might actually try to do it myself i've tinted windows before and it 
worked okay. Um, it's just hard for like, you know, the rear windows on cars, but these are, you know, pretty flat and straightforward, except uh, the pop-out windows might be kind of hard to figure out stuff with that. They all are, are easy to take off and it's really easy to tint windows when you take them out. And I'll have one of those 5% brows across the front windshield once I get it fixed. And this does have factory tint, so there's no tint on the front two windows and then there's like a factory tint on all the rear ones. The front ones will be you know dark enough and these will be a lot darker and then also uh, some of the windows or parts of the windows I haven't fully decided are gonna be completely blocked out I know this one right here is gonna be completely blocked off I'm gonna put foam insulation right here and, and there's gonna be a black wool fabric so it's completely blacked out from the outside and that'll give me a little extra insulation and I'm probably gonna put like full-on cabinets or shelving right here I'm gonna have a fridge that basically pulls out on slides and opens up on the top. Those are pretty cheap and they don't consume a lot of power. For the subfloor, I'm gonna have little cross members that go across, made of uh, plywood probably. I'm not exactly sure on the thicknesses. And then I'm gonna use foam board in between those and it's gonna go all the way to the front. And then I'm gonna have plywood that goes on top, like that much total on the floor. And then that way the floor is nice and insulated and foam board doesn't cost too much. And then for the sides and the roof, I'm gonna use uh, what's called Havelock wool. And I don't really wanna use like fiberglass or you know, glass fibers because you know, there's gonna be a lot of vibration when I go over washboards and stuff like that. I just don't want that stuff to get airborne and breathe it in. It's not that healthy. Wool's a little bit more expensive, but it has some good stuff. It has a pretty high R value. It also has a lot of sound uh, deadening features to it and it breathes re really well and handles moisture well. I'm gonna be using that. I think I could probably do a whole van for like 300 bucks. It'll also save some by using foam board on the floor. Oh, and also on the floor between the cross members that I'm gonna put down, I'm also gonna have that sound deadening mat and that should help quite a bit as well. As far as the finishing touches go, I'm gonna use a uh, beetle kill pine, which is really cool. It's also called blue pine, so it's like a regular pine and uh, it's got this like blue stuff in it. Um, it's really beautiful. I'm definitely going for the log cabin kind of vibes in here. It'd be kind of bright, you know, and a lot of wood. And I'm probably gonna put in a cedar plank roof. And it's gonna be fairly thin and it's gonna have insulation in the middle. And I'm gonna use those little LED puck lights that have the spring loaded catches and you just cut out holes in the cedar planks. And I'm just gonna install those up there gonna have quite a few and a little dimmer switch. I've actually already made a door panel for this specific door right here. And I just used the original door panel as a template and then cut out some uh, blue pine shiplap. And that should go right there. I'm actually gonna put in riv nuts and it should hold on really well. And I kind of just did that early on to give me more of a creative direction that I'm gonna go with this van. I made the cutout for the door handle and made some speaker slots actually. And I'll put a, some door poles on there. Probably just the nylon strap with the rubber grip. The reason I put uh, speaker slots instead of, you know, a speaker cutout and then a grill on top on this door because I'm gonna put an outdoor water heater shower on this. They're actually pretty small, so it should fit pretty well on there. I'm also gonna go ahead and replace the six by nine speakers. Uh, there's two in the back, and then one on this door, and one on this side. I'll probably remove this whole bracket and then just put the speaker um, somewhere else in one of the cabinets or something. I'll just use the same wires. And there's also two in the front. Also under the driver's seat, I'm gonna put an under seat sub. I can't fit one under the passenger seat because there's this uh, little compartment, which is kind of nice to have that actually. I might also put tactile transducers in here just to give you a little more of that bass feel, but it should be a pretty cool sound system. In the head unit, we'll have Bluetooth, so you can just have your phone and change the song from there. And also I'm gonna put in a changeover switch that'll change the power from the van over to the 
rear electrical system. That way you don't run the van batteries down when you have the radio on. And I'm just gonna keep the front pretty much the same besides the black carpet and some mats in the seats. And I think those seats will kind of go with the pine. Originally I wanted a composting toilet, but uh, they're just so expensive. And apparently a lot of people like the porta potties. You can actually get a bracket so it clamps down onto the floor and then it's easy to remove and you can take it outside. So I'm gonna have the bathroom box vent it. And this is the little hump for the gas fill port. There's a lot of room under here, but I'm gonna pretty much cut a hole and put a screen little vent thing right there. And it's gonna go through a tube and then there's gonna be a computer fan. There's gonna be a switch somewhere and a uh, speed controller as well. And that'll pretty much just suck air from inside the bathroom box to the outside. So that way you don't have to worry about anything smelling. And if I wanna put a composting toilet later on, uh, the plumbing will all be there ready to go. On top of the bathroom box, I might put a cushion so someone can sit there if they need to. And I might also put tie down points, maybe four of them, so you can tie down a bunch of luggage if you need to do that. Since this window pops open, I'm not gonna cover this in any way. So I might have a little bit of counter space right here, and then it's gonna go all the way up to the top. I might put all my electronic uh, switches and um, screens and everything right there. I'm not 100% sure though. I might also have a sliding curtain that kind of slides behind here. That way you can slide it out at night or if you just need some privacy. I might have a drawer that holds a trash can that just slides out and then you have a place to put your trash and slides in and locks. And then like I said earlier, this whole window is going to be blocked off and insulated with the slide out fridge on the bottom and then probably just cabinets to store stuff. And then of course I'll have the bed right here and there's gonna be like a little wall you know under the bed and i think i'm gonna have two drawers under the bed and then next to it there's gonna be a spot and my diesel heater is gonna vent out right about here and then i'll also have a fan above that that you can switch on i will have a max air fan you know somewhere around here i'm not exactly sure yet but having a fan under the bed like that because it's all kind of sealed off under here if it's pushing out this way, it'll create a vacuum under the bed and it'll pretty much pull air past the bed because it'll be a little bit of a gap back there and it'll kind of just circulate air around the bed. I think that'll be a cool idea. But back to the diesel heater, these those things are so cool. I actually got a whole, you know, cheap Chinese diesel heater kit and apparently they work pretty well except you have to do a few modifications. And they come with everything you need. However, you may have to buy a little bit higher quality like tubing and stuff like that. There's a lot of good videos on how to make those work really well. And they come with the digital thermostat and like everything you need. And like I said, I'm gonna make my own custom tank underneath the vehicle. Cause a lot of people put the diesel tanks inside and I'm not really a huge fan of that because if that thing leaks and gets under or on your sub floor, it'll smell like diesel in here forever. And I definitely don't want that. So all the diesel is gonna be handled outside and I'm not exactly sure where the diesel heater is going to go it comes with ducting and you can run it you know to this vent that's going to be right here and that will keep me nice and warm in the winter time the diesel heaters are super cool because they're so efficient and just five gallons of diesel you could probably heat this van if it's well insulated for like a whole week but i mean it also depends on how cold it is outside and of course all the combustion exhaust is routed outside so you don't have to worry about carbon monoxide however you probably definitely want a carbon monoxide detector just in case they do use a bit of electrical power um, mostly when starting up because they have to light the glow plug but after that they just use a little bit but i'll have plenty of videos on the diesel heater and i'm probably gonna set it all up and make sure it works before i even install it in the van obviously you have to cut a hole in the floor and they're a little bit involved because you have to do some electrical wiring and stuff like that and also for the diesel tank i'm gonna put in a level sensor that's electric and I'm gonna have just a momentary on button and a gauge so you can just press the button you can hold the button down and it'll tell you how much diesel is left in the tank I think it'll be pretty cool I, mean, I haven't seen anyone do something like that but I think I can get it done anyways moving further back um, above the bed only on one side I'm gonna have you know either some cabinets or just a shelf because 
I want one side just free so I don't bonk my head, you know, when I'm waking up. I'll have curtains and or window block offs. I think it'd be cool to make like some window coverings that roll up and then have like some Velcro or something, that just hold them up top. That'll be way, way later. So as far as the layout goes on the other side, I'm gonna have pretty much just a countertop all the way across, maybe. Maybe I'll have part of this window blocked off. But uh, like I said earlier, the cabinet's gonna come out to here and have the fold out desk for that chair. And then I'll have a stove top and for the stove top and the rear outdoor water heater shower. Um, each one's gonna have, you know, one of those smaller propane tanks, like individually. And I just think that's super simple versus having like, you know, a complex like gas system. And also one of those carbon monoxide detectors, uh, a lot of times they come with, you know, propane gas detectors as well in case you get a leak. And then next to the stove, I'm gonna have a sink. It's gonna be cold water only. And there'll be an electric pump system that feeds the sink and the rear outdoor water heater shower. But for the water tanks, I'm just gonna use those cheap seven gallon tanks. I'm gonna kind of modify them with like quick releases. And there's gonna be an opening on the outside so you can easily kind of slide them out. I just like that idea because it's cheaper and you can take it out and go like fill it up in a store or something like that versus trying to find like somewhere where you can pull your van next to and hook it up and get fresh water. And I'll just have two seven gallons for fresh water and then one gray water seven gallon tank. So I'll have 14 gallons of fresh water and I may have to put one of the tanks back there. I'm not 100% sure. And you can also, you know, get more and bring more if you're going to like a desert or something like that. I'm also gonna get a gravity fed water filtration system with like a bag that you can make super compact and it's got a filter that filters at like 4,000 gallons. That way you can just fill the bag up at any like, you know, freshwater stream or lake up in the mountains and you just hang it up on a tree, take one of those tanks out and then just let gravity do its work through the filter. That way it can help you, you know, live off the grid quite a bit longer. Also really quick for the rear door panel, I'm gonna use this space in here to make like a cubby hole. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in there, but it's nice to have as much space and places to put things in a van like this as possible. All right, moving on to the electrical system. Um, that's gonna be stored underneath the bed. I'm not exactly sure which side it's gonna be on. I've been watching a lot of uh, off-grid like solar channels and everything and apparently uh, lithium iron phosphate is the best way to go. It definitely can be expensive. However, I'm gonna build my own battery system. So I've actually or already ordered uh, four lithium iron phosphate 280 amp hour cells and I'm gonna build my own battery basically. I'm gonna get a DALI BMS, battery, which stands for battery management system and basically build it all myself because you can do it a lot cheaper. And the nice thing about lithium iron phosphate, it's one of the safest lithium chemistries there is. If you kind of DIY it and do it yourself, you know how everything's set up. And if you have one component go bad, like one cell or the battery management system, you can replace just that part versus like a whole you know sealed battery unit. But it definitely takes a bit of know-how and you really have to do your research. Um, personally, I love doing that stuff. You know, I fly FPV, so I've already learned a whole lot about like batteries and electronics and stuff like that. But with four cells, uh, it'll basically be a 12 volt system, but 280 amp hours is quite a lot. That's like, uh, I can't remember, it was like, it's over 3000 watt hours. So basically you can run, you know, 3000 watts for a full hour. That's like running a microwave for like three hours straight. So that's a lot of power. Also, one of the things with lithium iron phosphate cells is you cannot charge them under freezing. So basically the Dolly BMS that I'm getting has low temp cutoff built in. I'm also gonna build another system that uses a thermostat that will cut off the charging when the temperature gets too low. That way I'll have redundancy in case one of the systems fails, uh, it still won't charge the batteries below freezing. It's just because those cells are so expensive, uh, definitely don't want to damage them. So I'm gonna pretty much have three ways that uh, I'm able to charge the battery. Um, like I talked about earlier, I'm gonna have 300 watts of solar on the roof. That's gonna go to a solar charge controller. And then through my secondary low temp cutoff relay, and then it'll go to the 
battery management system. The second way of charging is I'm gonna put in a DC to DC charger. So it'll pretty much charge the batteries when the engine is running. And I'm gonna have a switch up front so you can turn it on or off if you need to. I'm thinking about doing 20 or 40 amps. I gotta figure out what size alternator this thing has and see if it can handle it. I didn't wanna use a regular battery isolator because I'd rather have it a little bit more controlled. That way you have a smart charger in between just in case the battery management system fails. Um, just some extra redundancy. And then the third way to charge is I'm gonna have Sure Power. I'm gonna put my Sure Power plug probably just on the floor, that way makes the van a little bit more stealthy so I don't have access ports on the side. And then you just crawl under there, open the flap up and plug it in. And that's gonna be connected to a 110 volt uh, lithium iron phosphate smart charger as well. Uh, maybe like 30 amps or something like that. That way all three chargers are smart chargers for lithium iron phosphate. The lithium iron phosphate cells, uh, I think you can charge them at 1C, so that would be 280 amps. Usually, I think it's actually lower, you have to look at the spec sheet, but with everything together, you could have it charging and it won't cause any issues. Plus the BMS manages charging as well. And then of course, I'm gonna either have a 1500 or 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and that will basically give you regular house plugs in the van, and you can you know run pretty hefty stuff because those lithium iron phosphate cells can output a lot of amps at one time, and they have so much capacity. So who knows, maybe I will install an espresso machine in the van, that'd be pretty freaking cool. But the inverter will be on a switch so you can turn it on or off because it does consume a little bit of power even if you're not using anything. So it's good to turn that off. And then back to the sure power, I'm gonna have a 110 volt changeover switch. So you know, one setting will be for the inverter and then in the middle, it'll go to zero. So it'll be completely off. And the other one will go right from sure power. So you can power the exact same, you know, house outlets inside the van off of house outlet that you plug into. And no matter what position you have it in, it'll be charging the battery system. That'll be just nice to have if I wanna do like a space heater and when I'm plugged in, at a house or something like that versus using the diesel heater all the time. So you don't have to run your inverter and use the power on your batteries. But yeah, that's gonna be the main power system I'm gonna be designing and setting up in this thing. And then of course I'll have all the cutoff switches and fuses and stuff like that. And I'll have, you know, a regular DC 12 volt fuse panel and I can run all the 12 volt stuff in the van. Like the puck lights that I'm putting on the ceiling. And I'm also gonna get RGBW uh, strip lights. I'm gonna put those in those cool little channels that have the cloudy lenses, so it kind of diffuses the light. And you know, you can change to any color you want, or it actually has a separate warm white chip on it. So it'll be more just regular light if you need to. And I'm gonna run those like on the ceiling and maybe on the floor as well. That should be pretty fun. And those will separately be on a switch so you can have one or the other or both at the same time. I'm also probably gonna do a three-way switch setup for the regular LED puck lights on the ceiling. So when you get in the van, there'll be a switch that you can you know turn on, it turns everything on. And then I'm gonna have another switch on a three-way setup. It's kind of hard to explain without going into depth, but basically you can flip that switch and it'll turn it off. But if you go back over there and flip the switch again, then it'll turn it on. They use that kind of switch setup in houses a lot. So you don't have to go all the way to the front and switch it off, you can just do it from bed so you're not like stumbling back in the dark. Also another thing, I'm gonna wire in another unlock and lock button and I'm gonna put it somewhere back here so that way I don't have to reach over the seats to lock the doors at night. I can just hit one switch and everything locks and then you can always pop them open to uh, get out if you need to. Also, I'm gonna have a switch for RGB rock lights that go underneath the van. I just think that'd be cool. I just like LEDs. They're so fun to play with and do all kinds of cool stuff with. And they're so cheap too. I might have an awning on the side that goes out and also like an LED porch light basically and a switch you just flip it on and you can see outside give you some light out there at night. Also another really cool thing I'm gonna do, it's definitely gonna take some work and planning, but I'm gonna have you know, basically night vision cameras 
360 around the van so one on each side and then one on the front and then it'll probably share the one for the backup camera that goes to the head unit on the front and I'm gonna have a screen above the bed and a switch that powers everything on and a four channel camera switcher and you can actually get a four channel monitor so you can see each camera all at once but I think it would be cool to have like a little switcher so you like can go through all the cameras be like five nights at Freddy's but I think that would be so cool to have in a big van build because you know if you hear something outside at night like you're just kind of scared the whole time and that'd be cool just right from your bed just flip a switch and you have night vision cameras and you can look all around the van that'd be pretty sweet and those little night vision you know backup cameras don't cost that much and you can get all different kinds that mount different ways and stuff and they're just analog um so nothing too crazy so it probably wouldn't really cost that much but it'd definitely take a bit of wiring but it would totally be worth it it'd be good to separate the water side because all my water is going to be on this side maybe i'll put the electrical stuff on this side that would actually make a lot a lot of sense and then of course you're gonna have you know a bunch of space under the bed and I'll have those drawers that I can put clothes and stuff right there and I'm gonna have the drawers so you can like basically take them out so if it's like raining outside or something you could take the drawers out and then crawl in the back if you have to like work on something or grab something because there's gonna be a lot of storage space but it'd be nice I could put all my like motorcycle riding gear back here under the bed all right guys hopefully that gives you a pretty good overview of everything i want to do to this econoline van i mean i could go on and on about all the little details that i'm going to do but uh, pretty much i just gotta get all the mechanical stuff fixed up and uh, all the rust taken care of that's the most important thing just get a good running platform to build on and then once I get rid of that thing and then put a sub floor in, it'll be pretty much downhill from there. I'm thinking probably a year and a half, two years until I have this thing mostly built, especially because I'm going to be making a lot of videos on it and that definitely takes a lot of time away. But uh, I think it'll be worth it and hopefully the videos will help a lot of people build their own van, but uh, it's definitely pretty exciting, especially for how cheap I got this thing. So, uh, anyways, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.